Thank you, sir. All right. I think there's a question with you. We're going to take just three of these questions right now. And what I'm going to do is, if you did not hear your question, then what we're going to do is, after the event, if after the event you still have that question, then you can meet any of the ministers that you see available and discuss with them. If you don't hear your question here, right? But I believe very strongly your question will be answered after this program. I uh, know it will be answered. All right, so very quickly, I have one question here, but he says, knowledge perfect up, right? How do one remain humble despite you having power and understanding in God? How do you run from pride? There's nobody here that is truly anointed. Eh? Truly anointed that would say at one point they didn't struggle with pride. It's a lie. I mean it's a lie. Ha. If you know what the anointing is, you suddenly feel like you're better than everybody around you. Because, let's be sincere now. You see, you see people try to undo a matter and they can't undo it. And you show up. And you, you, at, once, at one instance, you change everything. There's a sense of being better. That comes upon every man that is truly anointed. But like he said, fact is, if you are not careful, is it that you remain at that point or you drop? That's fact. I've been with great fathers, a few amongst them. And I, I can say boldly, there's a general secret with every one of them, is humility. I was with Shimundede yesterday, and Shimundede was telling me about Apostle Arame. He said, when I met Apostle Pastor, what he is in secret is not what he is in public. Saying that man is humble. I said, I, I now told myself, what people don't know about a man like Apostle Arame is the shape of his skull defines what he appears like in public. When you meet him in secret, he's very different. The last time I went, the last time I saw him, it was him. He came to welcome me at the gate. I'm, I'm not worthy of this. And, and it's fact. Every great man you know, what keeps them there, what sustains them at the echelon, is humility. You, you don't need any revelation to it. The fact that I will go back to where I was should make you have sense and say that I have to remain on. I think that. Praise God. All right, so final question, and this is for Pastor Philly. Um, the first one says, how do you know when you have carried genuine power? Is it just by faith, or you press into God until you are certain? And then, secondly, what do you do after an impartation? So sorry, sir. Pastor Philip, do you want me to read questions again? Yes. Uh, first one says, how do you know when you have carried genuine power? Is it just by faith or you press into God until you are certain? And then the second question says, what do you do after an impartation? Well, uh, uh, I'm not so much of a public person, so... There are not many details about me in public. But this is it. Uh, faith is good. But faith is not all. When in the book of Acts chapter 6, yes. Acts chapter 6, verses 5, you will see how they elected decades. They said, Choose ye among you seven men of earnest report, full of the Holy Ghost and faith. Right? No, Acts 6, 5. At, go to Acts 5. Yes, okay, let's do Acts 6, 5. And the same pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of and Holy Ghost. Now let's go to Acts 6, verse 8. In verse 5, Stephen was full of what? Faith and power. Holy, no, Holy Ghost, not power. Don't rush. Okay, go, go back to verses 5. Let them see. So it's not, I'm not twisting Bible. And the same pleased the whole multitude and the church Stephen, a man full of faith and Holy Ghost. Verses 8. Verses 8. And Stephen, full of faith and now what? Power. Did great wonders and miracles among 
the Holy Ghost in him had to migrate from Holy Ghost to power. What, what he was constant from the beginning, faith, he had faith in verses 5. He had faith in verses 8. In verses 8, what he had alone was not Holy Ghost, he had power. Huh? I, 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 I know there are faith preachers in this stuff. I'm sorry. Faith is not enough. Eh? You have to carry power. You can't by faith release what you've not activated. Let's tell ourselves the truth. I was somewhere and the person was telling me, he's my cousin. So we were talking and then he was saying, I said, bro, chill. He said, Bible said, as many that believe my name, they shall cast out demon. I said, so he now said, do you know that even my sister that just gave her life to Christ, I said, my sorrow to take a book at Let's take back to Boston. There are people in Boston. Let your sister come and raise one people. Before you, before we go, teach our own faith. Let our faith be strong and let's go. I know I contradict what many of you believe, but this is the gospel truth. Even the people that teach faith, they pray like bastard. Have you seen the tiger generator? They pray like tiger generator. Non stop. Faith is good, but faith is not enough. Or else you will abuse faith and you will, you will say faith is a lie. Because by faith you try things out and it won't work. Not because faith is a lie, but because you, you've not activated those graces. Huh? Are you listening? So you have to, that I, I, I have to first of all answer the first question that is it by faith. I have faith. Even believe me, believe me, believe me. Even if spiritual giftings and graces are activated already in you, if you don't have faith, it won't work. Do you think man of God came up yesterday and said the power of God will come just because he, he, he has faith that it will happen? Huh? Even if God tells you I've given you the anointing, if you don't by faith approach, you won't even seek. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm not talking down faith, but I'm saying faith is not enough. So it is not just a faith matter. There's an aspect of spiritual labor, and I'm not exactly labor over faith. Excuse me, please. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. So, how does one know that it's genuinely anointed? When spiritual graces, spiritual giftings, spiritual abilities begin to get activated in you, I lie not, I lie not. Without any shadow of doubt, you will know. There are graces that are present in my life, I know when they came. Some came as a product of an encounter. Some came as a product of a revelation. Some... There's this thing called, there's this thing called, I'm asking God for shit. There's this thing called ultras. It must have. I know when my game. Many people won't believe me. I'm a stammerer by default when I'm angry. If I get angry, I, st I stutter. You know why? My body chemistry is like that. When I'm angry, I stutter. So when I'm highly anointed, the same things that happen to me when I'm angry happens to me when I'm anointed. So I stutter. I have friends. That my friend is not here. He's a comedian. He's not that he's a comedian by profession, but by lifestyle. Uh -huh. He mocks me for, be, for being a stammer. He mocks me for stuttering. And then, back then, from way back, they were strong in utterance. Very, very strong. I remember one of those days, I shared this story in Calabar when I went to Mr. Calabar. I was in the room. I was just practicing. I don't know if I'm the only one that beats. Nobody is listening to me. There's no, I'm just the one giving charge. Say, have you found that? Only me. Nobody's there. So it was, it, this was back on campus, so it was passing the window. Then he said, wait, say that line again. And I said, say, okay, I just wanted to hear you stammer. So that was all. Then I said, Ben, why, why, why? He said, I said, I just, he said, I just want to hear you stammer. So I was grieved, very grieved. So I told God, that how can I solve this matter? One of those days, I heard Apostle Laramie preaching, and he said he was born a stammerer. I said, you. I was saying yesterday night, I, I was telling him, I said, I have not found any man that speaks better. Yeah. I have not found any man that is what burns my heart better than that man. Ha! I can be lying down. He, I, suddenly I jump up and say, who talks like this? Mm. And you, you say you are born in Stamara. So I told God, if you can change his own tongue to change my tongue. And it took about four months. I'm telling you, it took about four months of prayer. Four months of prayer. And then I had a dream. A dream. Apostle Lamy was ministering. And while he was ministering, I was working in the technical department in the dream. And then his microphone was fault. So they, they told me to give him a new mic. I brought the new mic and I collected the old mic and I woke up. Oh, yeah. When I woke up, I said, What does this mean? He said, Ultras. Oh, 
So we had a meeting, me and those my friends. They had the meeting. So they put me behind Tony. And Tony, among us, was the prince, is the prince of all trans. Tony is from Makot, the Beru. You know if you know anything about Beru people? There's fire on their tongue. Yes. They, they, they put me behind Tony. Tony, he rattled the whole place with all trans. I gave, by God's mercy and by God's grace, that he gave me, that he gave me, all trans was available. So after the meeting, Tony and Ben met me said, how you did find this thing? <laughs> I knew when all trans came. Fast forward 2020. Fast forward now, 2020. During the lockdown, I and my friends were having a prayer meeting. A prayer meeting where we're praying for 10 hours. You know that kind of prayer? Nobody's leading prayer. This is the idea. He wants to pray for 10 hours. I want to pray for 10 hours. He wants to pray for 10 hours. All right? But we don't want to pray at home alone. You could pray in his house. I could pray in my house. But we just want to pray for 10 hours. Nobody's leading prayer. We are just in church. Everybody. No prayer. Don't, 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 say, don't say it. Just will pray. I have my body. You have your body. We are just there. It's just our containers we want to use to encourage ourselves. That was the prayer. So everybody was running, praying, 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 praying. And in the seventh hour, at the seventh hour, we were praying from, I think, 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. In the seventh hour, then I had an encounter. The ceiling of the church seemed as if it slept. And I saw elders, elders, they were in white, they sat. And I saw the man I spoke about, Apostle Aramis, sat in their midst. And he was wearing the cassock of a bishop. No, of a reverend. I mean, you know this thing I have a wise scholar. Yeah. And he pulled it and he dropped it and I fell. Nobody laid down. I dropped. I screamed. And when I rose up, I said, What does this mean? He said, This is the added layer for all trans I am praying for. I know when this thing came. It's not magic. I prayed for it. And I'm not lying. The power of grace, I prayed for it. When it comes, you know it has come. I know. You might not know immediately. But in that season, maybe after two, three weeks, you see yourself manifest something. You say, ah, oh dear. Wait to me that. This one don't date you. This one is different. Uh, <laughs> that's fact. All faith right. is important, but faith is not enough. Labor is part of it. Let's tell us the truth. You can see this man now. See this man. say, because their face is not bony, they are fresh. You say, they know they pray much, they know they fast much. They, they pray, oh. They they fast oh. <laughs> if you're not going to take anything away from this planet, they they pray, they they fast, they they labor. Uh, Second thing, sir, um, what do you do after an impartation? Very quickly, we need to. Okay, if mm. actually some of these questions are not are not supposed to be asked, if after we study Bible, the Bible, the Bible is, it was Paul that told Timothy on two different occasions. He says, stay up, stay up. The gifts that has been imparted by the presbytery, stay am. up. The gifts that have been imparted by the Lord of God, stay stay up. It's no more than that. Stir up. You, you, the problem is, we want to be imparted, but we don't want to do anything about it. That's why we made the same after every meeting. Listen to me, after this meeting, the meeting does not end here. Fact is, I say it all the time great meetings don't end in the hall. No meeting actually ends. If it's, if it's orchestrated from heaven, great meetings don't end in the hall. It continues in everyone's secret place. The energies, the graces, and the life we've drawn from the secrets, we carry to our secret place. And then we go and labor and we do life, do ministry, do destiny, do business with it. Great meetings don't end in your in case something comes upon you in this meeting, don't believe you just carry yourself as now running. Go and labor with it. Spend time, spend time, spend time. I shared a story yesterday about how I received the impartation of the presence of God from Prophet Abraham and Abayo. I know what I did after them. I knew he's a man of serious fasting. If you see, you know this guy, this man, so it's forgive me. This man fasts a lot. After that meeting, I went into serious fasting so as to activate the impartation. So after impartation, what is next is activation. Go and spend time. Pray, 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 pray. When a man says, such as I have, I give unto you. You might be 40 years after that time and you will not see the things he says, such as I have. Because you didn't go to do anything about it. Thank you so much, sir. Hallelujah.